So you went through all the hard work of getting a PO from a customer. You did the work, you sent the parts out for a finishing operation, and the parts got messed up. Now the customer wants you to remake them at your expense. What now? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving into exactly that question. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so this week we are diving back into the Practical Machinist forums to highlight a thread that I personally found interesting and hopefully you do as well. Um, a guy came on to, with a predicament to the forums to ask a question and right off the bat guys, this made me cringe because this is a situation I've been in before. Um, a lot of you guys, if anybody has been in the tree for any length of time, you've probably been in the situation before and when you see someone else in it, it, it hurts, it hurts. It brings back painful memories. It's like if you have a football injury and you see one on TV, you can almost feel it. So this guy came on and he had a situation. He went and did all the hard work to quote out some work. You know, a lot goes into getting work, guys. You know, you have to find the customer. You have to make sure that customer is going to be a good customer so you can do the work they want. You need to quote it out. You need to quote material. Then you need to get the order. You get the material in, you do the work, et cetera, et cetera. So he does all this. He makes the parts. It sounded like it was a fairly large run. I'd call it a couple hundred parts. I believe these parts were some kind of heat sink. And after he made the parts, he had to send them out for some kind of finishing operation. I think it was a plating, you know, either anodizing or zinc, something like that. So what happened was, is he had, you know, they don't do the zinc or the plating in house. So he sent those out to his outside vendor, you know, to his finisher. So the parts go out and he wraps them all super carefully. You know, he puts them in a box, wraps each one individually and tells the finisher, you know, the outside vendor, Listen guys, you have to pack these back properly or they're gonna get damaged. So he thinks it's all fine. He then ships the parts directly from the finisher to his customer. What happened was the finisher did not pack the parts properly. And not only that, you know, he put a couple pictures on there. You know, if you click on the thread, you can see it. The boxes themselves that the parts were packed in actually broke during transit. So I don't know if they put them in new boxes or they just treated these things that badly but the parts get to the customer a some are missing b they're damaged so this looks terrible the customer obviously is not happy they want him to remake the parts obviously at his expense and get them new parts as quickly as possible um like i said guys this is an awful awful situation uh, he's probably going to be late on this as well you know you don't ship parts six weeks early. So the customer probably needed these parts. Now, not only does he have to deal with remaking them and paying for them and so on, he's also gonna be late. Um, it's an absolutely terrible situation, guys. The poster came on because obviously this is all fine and well, but you know, he was looking for some guidance. Does he try to fight the customer on remaking the parts? Does he try to go after the finisher, the outside vendor for compensation? Um, does he even trust that finisher with another run of parts? You know, it's all fine and well if they're gonna compensate him, but does he even trust them at this point to make those parts again, or to, you know, finish those parts again for him if he makes them? Essentially, as I've said before in previous videos, guys, the whole customer-vendor relationship is built on trust. Um, you know, your customer trusts that you're gonna make good parts and that they trust you're gonna deliver on time and you trust your vendors, your outside finishers and stuff, the same way. And now that trust is broken. It, it's, that, that's what it comes down to. <clears throat> there were quite a few answers on the forums to this question, some that I agreed with, some less so, but let's kind of go through them just because, you know, there were some very interesting responses there. The first thing that came up that I agreed with is, this happens, plain and simple, guys. This happens. Um, it was almost a bit disheartening reading some of the stories there to see how often this happens. I know, you know, if someone says something, we're all gonna chime in with our stories, whether that was two years ago or 10 years ago. 
But it was almost a little disheartening because you almost want to hope that this is such a rare thing and it doesn't happen all the time. No guys, this happens all the time. Um, as one guy who replied there said, we all have our bad anodizer or our bad finisher stories. Now you have yours. You know, hopefully it's a learning experience, but everybody's got a story there. Everybody's been in this predicament. As someone else also pointed out, um, the legalese, if you look at a lot of finishers or, you know, painters, anodizers, black oxiders, platers, in their legalese language on their quotes, it usually says, we can damage your parts, they can come out bad, and you are not entitled to compensation. It's, again, how legally enforceable is this? Who knows, but a lot of these companies almost have built in there that they're gonna do their best they can but they can't control everything. So it's, you need to be very careful when you're, doing, when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. The first point is, to sum that up, do your homework. It's very helpful, obviously, now that this has already happened, it doesn't actually help at all, but if you're ever going to select an outside vendor for your finishing, do your homework first. Test them out. Test them out to not only make sure that they can make your part look the way you want it to look and meet the specs, Test them out with some small orders to see how they treat your parts. If the part looks beautiful, but they ship it back to you in a busted up cardboard box, they're probably gonna treat a big order the same way. Really make sure you do your background on these companies because guys, finishers, they're the finished step. You've already put all your time, labor, and material into it. You need to trust them as much as you trust your own guys to make sure they're gonna treat your parts well. Because if not, you gotta start from zero or you know, pretty close to zero. You can strip and whatever, but it's never gonna be the same. So do your homework. The second answer that I really agreed with, um, but again, it's a piece of advice that really only helps in hindsight. Um, it's not something that's gonna help this guy right the second, but it's extremely, extremely risky to ship parts directly from any kind of finisher to your customer. Doesn't matter, paint, plating, whatever. Very, very risky. As others have said there, you want the opportunity to look at the parts before they go out. Um, you know, it's your name on the parts. It's not your anodizer's name on the parts. It's not your painter's name on the parts. Your customer does not care that that anodizer has screwed up. They care that the order they ordered from you is screwed up. They trust that you are going to select a good vendor for that finishing process Otherwise, they would have done it themselves. You know, if they didn't trust you, they would say, you ship parts raw, we'll get them finished. They've trusted you to do this. So it's your name on it. It costs more money, obviously, to get parts. You know, when I get my parts anodized, they have to go down, you know, about 45 minutes away to my anodizer and then come back. I have to pay for each, each trip there, you know, whether we drive it ourselves, whether we get it couriered, that is a cost. Would it be cheaper for me to ship directly from the anodizer to the customer? Definitely. The thing is though, even if 99% of the parts that come back from there are good, I want the opportunity to be able to pull out that 1% of parts. It looks a lot better if 100% of the parts I ship meet specs, look the way I want them to look. You know, it costs money for us to pay people to inspect them again. But at the end of the day, we know we're not shipping bad parts. If you take that step out of the equation, you're playing with fire. I don't know if it's possible to trust the vendor enough to not at least have inspection there. Because guys, even at the best companies, at the best finishers, at the best vendors, an employee is gonna have a bad day somewhere, right? Maybe the guy had a late night the night before, maybe the guy is an apprentice, he makes a mistake, doesn't know he made a mistake, and ships the parts out. A lot of people can be asleep at the wheel, even at the best companies. You know, We have shipped out parts before that have been bad. It happens. You want to make sure you have that extra step in there to catch that before it goes out to the customer. <clears throat> the third answer that I agreed with is that unfortunately in this scenario, there's not really much you can do. The best case scenario that this guy can have is hopefully remake the parts, get them refinished, get them to the customer as quickly as possible, eat the cost, save the relationship. Um, you know, if a customer is ordering a few hundred parts, even if they're a first time customer, to me, that sounds like they're probably gonna be a pretty decent customer. Salvaging that relationship, to me, is going to be first and foremost. 
As to dealing with the actual vendor themselves, the finisher, either the anodizer or the plater, whatever it may be, my thought was kind of the same thing as a couple people's on that. I would take the parts, especially the bad ones. I would take pictures. I would do whatever I could. Take that down to the vendor and meet with them. I would try to meet with the highest person I can there, you know, either the shop manager, the shop owner, the foreman, whoever, and just have a meeting and just say, hey guys, this is what we're dealing with. Because as much as we like to think people are irrational and everybody's out to get us and people are lazy, most people in this world are normal, rational thinking humans. So if you go meet with some normal, rational thinking humans, they're gonna look at something that is obviously wrong and say, yeah, do you know what? We screwed up. Do you trust them to redo it? That's another question, that's kind of on you. I don't know what the relationship is between you and the vendor. If that's the first time the vendor has messed up that bat and you've been using it for 10 years, that's a different scenario than if you use them twice and the second time parts come out garbage. Um, you may want to look at other vendors so at least you have a backup should that relationship sour. But on one hand, hopefully you're dealing with rational, normal people, they're gonna fix it. If they try to turn it around on you on the other hand and say, oh, it's your fault, you did this, we didn't do anything wrong, look at this paperwork, it says we don't care. Guys, you don't want to use that vendor again anyway. I, I mean, they're gonna show their true colors and you just had a expensive learning lesson but you got a lesson out of it anyway. And that is this customer or this company is not worth dealing with, move on. In any case, guys, like I said, everybody has these stories. It never gets less painful. Uh, you really just wanna make sure the most important thing I can highlight in there is inspect your parts. For example, we have a bunch of aluminum running through here right now. I got, you know, 6063 pushed in a, in a custom rectangular shape because I wanted to make sure that this material was perfect because we have to anodize it all. Material came in, looks amazing. We do our work, we send it out for anodizing. For whatever reason, in about 5% of parts, there are dye lines. You cannot see them before it is anodized. They are not there before it is anodized. It is something in the material. The anodizer has done nothing wrong, but those dye lines exist. If I had shipped those parts out direct, I would get an angry phone call from my customer when they go to install this saying, hey, we have lines in how, you know, in 5% of the parts. 5% isn't a lot, but we need 100% to do this job. By giving ourselves the opportunity to at least go, oh, hey, there's a little bit of a problem here. It gives us a chance to fix the problem instead of potentially passing that problem onto our customer. And guys, I'm just illustrating that because that's a scenario where I personally thought I did everything I could to be as on top of this as possible. And had I just skipped that last step, I still would have had a problem. So make sure, make sure, make sure you are inspecting everything always. In any case, guys, I'd like to hear how you have navigated these kind of scenarios before. We've all had them. Please let us know in the comments below. You know, some of these discussions can be awesome. Um, it's funny, some of our discussions on these YouTube uh, examinations of forum posts can actually get more posts than the forum posts themselves but let us know in the comments below. Also go check out that thread. Feel free to chime in. We're gonna link it in the show notes here above. If you wanna see more videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.